attentive. <laughs> On the evening of that first day of the week, even though the disciples had locked the doors of the place where they were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood before them. Peace be with you, he said. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his sign. At the sight of the Lord, the disciples rejoice. Peace be with you, he said again. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive men's sins, they are forgiven them. If you hold them bound, they are held bound. It happened that one of the twelve, Thomas, the name means twin, was absent when Jesus came. The other disciples kept telling him, We have seen the Lord. His answer was, I will never believe it without probing the nail prints in his hands, without putting my finger in the nail marks and my hand into his side. A week later, the disciples were once more in the room, and this time Thomas was with them. Despite the locked doors, Jesus came and stood before them. <coughs> Peace be with you, he said. Then to Thomas, take your finger and examine my hands. Put your hand into my side. Do not persist in your unbelief, but believe. Thomas said in response, my Lord and my God. Jesus then said to him, You became a believer because you saw me. Blessed are they who have not seen and have believed. Jesus performed many other signs as well, signs not recorded here in the presence of his disciples, but these have been recorded to help you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, so that through this faith you may have life in his name. Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Christ is risen. Indeed. Christos vos crescen. And good morning, everyone. Good morning. Together on this beautiful Sunday morning, we celebrate the second Sunday of Pascha, the second Sunday of Easter. And every year, this Sunday is always dedicated to this gospel reading we just heard from St. John the Apostle and Evangelist, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. And based upon the gospel reading, this Sunday is also called the Sunday of St. Thomas. But today I'm going to begin with a story. A story which took place in a beautiful house in the countryside, where one day a young mother came into her daughter's room to find her busy with her crayons and paper. The mother looked at the little girl and said, Honey, what are you drawing? And here the little girl looked at Mommy and said, A picture of God. I'm drawing a picture of God. Here the mother smiled and said, But honey, no one knows what God looks like. But then the little girl looked at Mommy and said, Mom, they will now when I get through. <laughs> My friends, this story is an introduction to today's homily because starting on Easter Sunday, we began reading from the Gospel of St. John. On Pascha, Easter Sunday, you heard the beginning Chapter 1 of St. John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God. What is John trying to teach us with his Gospel reading, with that Gospel book that he read? John, just like that little girl in that story, he is trying to show me and you, he is trying to teach us 
He's telling you and me what God looks like once he is finished with his gospel book, we are going to know what God looks like. But the question is on this Sunday, for whom is John writing his gospel reading? For whom? For you and for me. But also for those doubting, skeptical Thomases in our lives. For those doubting and skeptical Thomases in our lives. In you and in me, in our families, in our 21st century society today. And the topic of this homily is being skeptical, doubting. So let's get to the definition. What is the definition of being a skeptic, skepticism? And I quote, It means to be disbelieving or unbelieving in regards to something. So when a person says to you, I find that hard to believe, they are being skeptical. The attitude of a skeptic is, prove it to me, change my mind. Other words for skepticism is doubt or unbelief. So if you look at the front cover of today's bulletin, and I often don't do that, but if you look at the front cover, there you see the Sunday of St. Thomas, the icon for this Sunday. And with the Gospel reading of St. John, John is showing us how God engaged skeptics, how God engages us when we are feeling like Thomas, when we have that notion of skepticism in our hearts, when we are feeling shrouded in doubt and fear. Number one, what is it that we learn today? Based upon the Gospel reading, we learn that Jesus comes to us. He comes to us in the midst of our doubts and fears. Now, if you were listening carefully, right in the beginning of today's Gospel reading, in verses 19 to 23, <clears throat> we learn and we hear that the followers of Christ, because of fear, were worthy. They were hiding behind closed doors. It says they were hiding, they were behind locked doors. Why? Because they were afraid. They saw what happened to their teacher. They saw what happened to their master. He was arrested. He was tortured. And at the end, he was crucified on the cross. The worst punishment that they can think of. So when all this happened, oh yes, the apostles, the followers of Christ, they were shrouded in doubt and fear. And therefore, they were hiding behind locked doors. But what happens? Jesus appears, and he offers them words of comfort. He tells them, peace be with you. Words of comfort that we hear often in our divine liturgy in the Byzantine church. So when we think about that situation, how can I, as a priest, serving this parish family, how can I relay this notion of not being afraid to you if you are skeptical? Number, we need to look at the locked doors. Because often you and I, we find ourselves behind locked doors. In life, Maybe we have put ourselves 
intentionally behind locked doors. And those locked doors in your life or my life can be the locked doors of anger, the locked doors of resentment, the locked doors of addiction, the locked doors of lies, the locked doors of suffering, the locked doors of loneliness, and I can continue on and on and on. Because of our human weaknesses, because of situations in our lives, we find ourselves often behind locked doors. So the one thing we can learn today is that Christ wants to be there. He wants to be behind the locked doors with you in order to help you, in order to offer you words of comfort, in order to tell you and me, my son, my daughter, my friend, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Because we need that peace and comfort in our lives. But you know what? There are situations where Christ wants to come in, but on the other side, we need to open those doors that are locked. We not only need to open those doors, we need to open our hearts. We need to open our eyes. We need to open our ears in order for Christ to enter and be with you and me. I remember my Bubba in her kitchen hanging on the wall. She had, and I'm sure you're familiar with this famous picture of our Lord in a beautiful garden. There's a stone house, and he's knocking on that door. Christ knocking on that door. But if you look closer, you will realize there's something missing on that door. It's the handle. That's missing on that door. So what does that tell you and me? Oh yes, in our lives, Jesus is knocking. But we are the ones on the other side. We need to open that door to welcome Him. To bring that peace harmony, and love into our lives. Number two, so when Jesus is in, when he comes into our lives, as we see on the front cover of today's bulletin in that icon, what happens next? He reaches out to those of little faith. And as you heard in today's gospel reading, Jesus told Thomas, and he's telling you and me, don't be faithless any longer. Believe. Thomas, believe. Now, there's a story of a father who had a teenage boy. And this is not a personal story, by the way. <laughs> And this father, he was kind of skeptical with his son. You know, this teenage boy was not doing that well in school. He was kind of getting through. Well, one day, this teenage boy came home, and he had a piece of paper in his hand, and he said, Dad, Dad, I want to sign up. I want to get my driver's license. Can you please sign? And the father thought, oh, bullshit, okay. <laughs> But here the father thought for a moment and he said, okay, I'll sign. But in the back of his mind, this dad was kind of skeptical. Well, to his surprise, the son got his driver's license. So the next thing, the son comes home with his driver's license, walking up the driveway, and he goes, daddy, daddy, when can we sit down and talk about the use of the car? The dad couldn't believe it. He took the driver's license and looked around it, and it's true. He made it. But then God, his dad got a brilliant idea. He took his son into his study. 
he sat down and he said, son, I'm proud of you. You got your driver's license. But in order to use the car, I must see that you are a responsible young man. That you are a responsible young man. If you bring up your grace, if you study scripture, if you read the Bible, and if you get a haircut, <laughs> then we'll talk about the use of the car. After about a month, the boy came back, and again, he said, Daddy, I want to talk about the use of the car. So again, they went into Father's study, they sat down, and here Dad began. Son, I've been so very proud of you. You have brought up your grades. You study the Bible, but you didn't get that haircut. And here the young man jumped in and said, But Dad, I've been thinking about that. In the Old Testament, Samson had long hair. In the Old Testament, Moses had long hair. And if you look in the New Testament, Jesus had long hair. But here the father looked at him and said, Oh, yes, son. And they walked everywhere they went. <laughs> but what happens today? When Christ enters the room, he offers peace. He looks at Simon. And Jesus did not scold Simon, or he did not punish him or ignore him. He did not shame him. He reached out to Thomas. He reached out to Thomas. He didn't take Thomas into his study and give him a lesson. Oh no, Christ enters into our lives. He wants to be there with you and me. He wants to offer you and me, just like he offered Thomas, that opportunity for that spiritual U-turn in our lives. So that's what we learn today, that in the midst of our troubles, even if we are doubting Thomas's sometimes, we have that opportunity to open the door and to welcome Christ. And Jesus, our Savior, risen from the dead, he offers you and me that opportunity for that spiritual U-turn. And then we cry out like Thomas, my Lord and my God. Friends, skepticism is not terminal. Once a skeptic does not mean always a skeptic. Anyone, any one of us can move in a moment of time from disbelief to belief. So let's continue this journey together, looking at Thomas and realizing that in each one of us, we find ourselves being like Thomas, but we must cry out with him, my Lord and my God, amen. Christos Christos. Let us.